Hey, 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 this is Jennifer Allwood, and this is the Jennifer Allwood Show, where we talk about creating a beautiful home and building a creative business. Hey, friends, today's podcast is sponsored by Antique Farmhouse, my source for farmhouse decor online. Go visit antiquefarmhouse.com to sign up for their daily decor deals, but I will forewarn you. They're addicting. You can get furniture, decor, art products up to 80% off retail. Again, go find them at antiquefarmhouse.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so glad that you're here with us again this week. And I'm super excited to introduce you to someone that I've known for several years and had the honor of working with. You're going to have the pleasure today of hearing from Brian Dixon. Brian is the founder of the marketing firm, The Dixon Agency, and most recently, Amplify Publishers, which we're going to talk about on the podcast. Brian helps authors, speakers, and bloggers create and launch their online courses, which I know many of you are itching to do. So Brian's an excellent communicator and speaker, which you're going to hear today on the podcast. He's published several books of his own and has even done a TED Talk, which I can't wait to talk to him about. So he's a great business coach, but equally important, a person of great moral convictions and a commitment to his own personal development. So I'm super excited for you to meet him. Hey, Brian. Hey, Jen. How are you? I'm so glad that you're here today. I know you're a busy guy. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your week to chat with us. So it's uh, cool and crisp in Kansas City today, and you and your family are still in North Carolina, am I right? Yeah, we're in Charlotte. It's supposed to snow tomorrow. I know. I saw Texas like got flurries last night. What the heck? It's and we're crazy. supposed to have like 60-something this weekend, and so I feel like the seasons are a little reversed. But I had uh, the honor of working with you a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and um, just so our listeners can kind of get some context. Um, a friend of mine recommended I give you a buzz. I was launching all of my DIY painting videos. Love it. Love it. We worked together for a good year or two on strategizing and Mm -hmm. launching and figuring out, um, how to tighten up my platform, which was was really great for me to do. And, and, uh, both of our businesses have seen a lot of growth and some Mm -hmm. shifting in the last couple of years. And um, it's been fun to watch you. I feel like both of us have kind of settled in to our lane. Yes. Yeah, which is super fun. And, and so I just kind of want to talk to you today about um, what it is that you do and kind of how you got started. I know you're totally committed to helping people um, launch mm-hmm. their six-figure courses online. But I right. want to know like how you started and kind of what the backstory was. And, and then we'll get to some of that juicy technical stuff at the end. Oh, I love it. Jen, thanks again for having me. Sure. So, you know, for you guys listening to the podcast right now, you, you just, I want you to take out a pen because you got to write this down. I have a message to share and an audience to serve. I I believe that's true of everybody. You have a message to share and an audience to serve. And the thing is, Jen and I know this, it takes a while to figure that out. It takes a while to figure out who is your audience and what specifically is your message. And usually when we start out, we want to be all things to all people. We want to share 100% of our life. We're, We're passionate about our faith. We're passionate about our family. We're passionate about our you know, our health journey and our technology. And so we just sort of go blah online. (laughs) Yes. And people aren't ready for 100% of us. They're just just not (laughs) ready. It's too much. It's too Too much. much. So I think it's 12%. I think we share about one eighth of our life. And it takes us a while to figure out which one is connecting, which one are we passionate about. And so for me, it's always been about helping people grow and helping people engage in, in really deep and rich content that affects their life. And so for me, I started way back. Like, I mean, we want to go back, back. We're back, talking, back. I, we're talking high school. Okay. Yeah. I was in a band. I, I was a musician. And what kind we, of band? This is important yeah, information. What we kind of a band? In, we were in, okay. So we were kind of like, okay, this is going to date me here. It's okay. We, we were like the cranberries. Yeah, right. you just Remember lost them? me right there. Like, if you're right. talking Run DMC, I'm totally tracking you, but I have no idea who the Cranberries are. Oh, that's so funny. Like, kind of like uh, uh, Fleetwood Mac uh, with, with 90s, uh, kind of 90s styling. So, like, a folk yeah. rock band uh, where there was a male and female singer. I was the male singer, and then there was a female singer, so we kind of would take turns okay. on songs. And, uh, you know, so we thought we had a message, right? We're, we're doing our concerts, and we're making records and that kind of thing. And so it started way back then, you know, it was about doing concerts and selling records and, you know, marketing. And, and what I learned over time is I loved that process, having, having a product, which for us was a CD or mm-hmm. a concert coming up 
and trying to fill the seats, trying to get people engaged. And, um, and this way pre-internet. Yeah. You know, internet was early days of internet. We're talking like the late- Pre-Google. <laughs> Pre-Google, absolutely. All there was no was Facebook. Facebook. No. And so we would do like posters, you know, yeah. and it was always, the, the, the problem we were trying to solve is how do we get people to the concert or how do we get people to buy our tape or buy our CD? Yeah. How do we get in the store? And so I think what's happened over the last, you know, really 20 years is we've all realized that we have this platform. We have this online brand. Even if you're just, you know, just a person, you have an Instagram. And so what do I post on Instagram and what do I share on Instagram? And I think we're all having this kind of question in our mind of like, how can, how can I engage people? How can I make a difference? How can I make an impact? And I think it, it's just a conversation we're having more and more because of our reach, you know? It used to be that after I graduated from high school, I wouldn't see those people again. Maybe like the 20 year reunion, but that's yeah. it. Yeah. But they're still my friends. If I post something, they'll comment on it. That's just craziness. It is. You know, that we're still connected. And so I, that's what I'm passionate about. Looking at the opportunity that we have to right. connect to people all over the world and how can we focus our message in a way that increases our impact and our income, not just our impact. Right. Because you can't just make a difference without making an income because you're going to go broke. And starve. <laughs> and starve, but not just our income either because then we kind of come across as cheesy, sleazy, and salesy. So you've got to do left foot, right foot, impact and income. So I believe that coaching and having courses is a really great way to do that because it helps people take the next natural step in working with you. Love it. Love it so much. And so you graduated high school and you actually became a teacher. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Like elementary, high school. Tell us oh, what you got. Yeah. So, I mean, I was in this, it was life-changing car accident in college. Yeah. And, I really uh, want to talk about that if oh, we have time to absolutely, today. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do. If you're willing to share your story, Brian, I know that's yes. really a, a huge part of who you are. So let's chat about that. Yeah. You know, I was, I was in a band. I was, I was my freshman year of college. So what I would have been like 19 years old. And uh, I went to a, a Christian college, a Bible college, mm -hmm. and I was the worship leader. So we were traveling to the, we had an annual day of prayer for our college, which is pretty awesome. And we were traveling about 20 miles away to a, to a local church. And, and, and that morning, it was February 20th, 1997. That morning, um, the night before there was a, there's a freak rainstorm in Canada where I was growing up. This is Manitoba, Canada. Mm -hmm. February 20th is supposed to be really cold, not rain, right? Snow, but not rain. Yeah. And it got warm for some reason and it rained that day, that night and all the power went out. So the person who normally stands the roads, you know, to uh, assaults the roads, right. um, slept in, you know, his alarm didn't go off. And so the highway, and all the local roads were just a sheet of ice right. because it rained and then it froze. Yeah. For people that don't understand ice, they're yes. probably like, what? Okay. Ice is awful. Yeah. It was it's treacherous. Awful. Yes. I get so it. We're, so my band is in my little car. You know, my drummer is in the van behind us with all the gear. And uh, we're traveling to, to this church in, at like 7 o'clock in the morning on a Friday. And, uh, and so, you know. We're, we're, in the road, we're, we're in the car, we're, we're traveling to the church, and we're about to cross over a highway, and it's just prairies, right? So there's no overpasses or anything. Just you have to stop and wait, and then you yeah. cross the highway. And, uh, and so we're headed towards the stop sign to the major highway, and the, the ice is so thick that literally my brakes didn't work at all. Yeah. We just traveled right through the mm -hmm. intersection, right on the highway, and there was a ca one car. As far as the eye could see, there was only one car, and it was headed right towards us. And so I remember seeing it, it was like slow motion, seeing the car. And, you know, I leaned over to the middle of the car, closed my eyes. And I thought I would wake up in, in heaven. You know, I thought that was it. That was it. Yeah. That was it. I mean, 100% impact, like T-boned, you know, yeah. right into my door. And I remember, uh, I, I never fall asleep or anything. I, I opened my eyes right after the impact, after the car stopped spinning. Mm -hmm. And I saw my hands and I, and I remember looking at them and I'm thinking, okay, I'm not dead, but I'm paralyzed. And then I, then I moved my hands and I remember going like as a 19 year old, I'm, I'm rededicating my life of service of, mm. of to my faith and of to serving people with these hands, because I don't know how much of the rest of me works right now, right. but my hands work. And wow. so for me it was, what can I do? Like I've got, I've been given a second chance. What can I do with these hands to make an impact? And that was really where I, I realized, you know, I had I taught Sunday school, I taught guitar lessons, I, I worked at a summer camp. And for me, it was all about, I can use these hands to teach people, I can use these hands to show people things that make an impact on them. 
And that's really where it, 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 it shifted from, it's about me trying to be a famous rock star, ah. me helping other people discover what, what really is special about them and what makes them unique. That is so powerful. So powerful. And so you had quite a long rehabbing, Recovery. am I yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Broke my hip in 26 places. How does that happen? 26 places. Shattered. Just shattered. It's the full impact of the car directly yeah. on my hip. I, you know, they had to use the jaws of life to pull me out of the car. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they gave up. They, they, it was so bad that they just didn't have the technology to do the surgery. And so they just said, we're just, you know, you're resigned to a wheelchair. I had three doctors tell me I'd never walk again. And then, um, in the Lord's goodness, I'm a person of faith. Amen. Absolutely. Yep. You know, they, they were having the national orthopedic surgeon convention in our city. Okay? Just, just randomly, just like random. <laughs> five days later. So it was the next week. Yeah, and the, and the keynote speaker, doc, Dr. Irving, asked just as a, you know we're we're both speakers. We speak at conferences, and and so we just chatted up with people that are hosting us, right? Yeah. And so he was talking to the conference planner, and he said, "Hey, do you have any like weird cases? You know, I've got an afternoon free. I mean, that's what the guy does for fun, you know." And so they said, "Yeah, there's this 19 year old kid. You know, he's a basketball player. We, you know, he's not going to walk again, but you know, he's broken in 26 places. You might just want to go meet him because I had such a great attitude. It's a new lease on life. You yeah, know? yeah. So, so he walks in, introduces himself. I'm laughing and talking with him. I mean, I'm in traction, right? So they they put a pin through my knee. They they put weights on the end of the bed to try to pull out the pressure oh from my it. Gosh. It was an immense pain. How, how long were you in the hospital, Brian? It was a while, wasn't it? At that time, it was five days so far." Okay. And, uh, and Dr. Irving walks in and he basically says, listen, I want to do an experimental surgery. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm willing to take a shot. My parents had to sign all kinds of waivers. Yes. And he went in there and it was like, it was like sewing two mops together, you know, yeah. pins and screws and bolts and everything. And uh, within 11 days from the accident, I took my first step. Crazy. Yeah. And then fast forward to today, because I know this part of yes. your story, but I would love for you to tell other people, um, yeah. you're a runner. I mean, they said you would never walk again, yeah. and you're a marathoner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I just look at it like, I, I just ran, just a few weeks ago, I ran the Savannah Marathon. It was my fourth marathon I've run, and, and I, the fastest time I've ever had, you know, I'm, I'm pushing 40 now, and yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm getting better with age, you yeah. know, and I mean... They, they took, I posted some pictures on my social media. I was not like posing. These are the photos they take on the course. And every, I'm going to tear up thinking about it. Every, every single picture I am beaming, smiling, I'm smiling yeah. for, for four hours, like for yeah. four hours, just because, you know, I, that's the point, right? Mm-hmm. It's not my story. It's, it's really, you're listening. It's your story. You have a story your story of struggle matters. Oh, that's, that's good. We, we shouldn't be ashamed of it. That's what we share. That's what connects us to people. So for me, it was like, look at this. Like, this is possible. If, if it's possible for me to, to run marathons, it's possible for you mm-hmm. to figure out how to sell your course. It's possible for you yeah. to figure out how to quit your miserable job and finally share your message online, you know? A- Man. Right? It's possible for you to write that book you've been talking about for years and years and years. You know what? It's going to take some hard work. Listen, I was in physical therapy for years, right? And I still, people ask me if I have pain. Yeah, it's raining right now. Like, I, I, it feels like somebody's taking like a marker and just kind of just, just doing that. Just stabbing like, you in the hip. Just yeah. Stabbing me in the hip. I, like, I feel it right now. It's like a throbbing. But the reality is, like, we're going to have that struggle. Uh-huh. But that's what makes us connect to our people. Yeah. So now, um, fast forward then. So you had your accident. You yes. obviously walked again, ran again, and then you ended up doing a TED Talk. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy. And so, so will you tell people, like, was that something, Brian, that you thought to yourself at some point, you know what, I really want to do a TED Talk someday, and you mm. worked to make that happen? Or was it just a random thing that the Lord kind of orchestrated? Or yeah. tell us what your TED Talk's about and how that even came to fruition. Yeah. So, you know, I. I, I st- after that accident, it really was like, how can I help people and how can yeah. I get my message out? And, and so that just led to starting to do teaching. And, and eventually, I, you know, I did a, a master's in teaching, eventually a doctorate in teaching. Mm-hmm. And the more you get educated, the more opportunities you have, you know, the more you, the personal development leads to more opportunities. And so I had the dream opportunity. This time I was about eight years into being a teacher. 
uh, just started getting into school administration. I was speaking at a conference up in Michigan and, and I was approached by a group of people in Michigan that were trying to start, or they were from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but they okay. met me at this conference in Michigan and they wanted to start uh, an innovative school in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And so it was a dream opportunity. I got to, as, as a teacher who was always getting in trouble for breaking the rules and doing new and interesting things, you yeah. know, and not following policy because I would like, I'd paint all my walls or I'd set up the computers in a weird way or I'd, you know, stay late, get there early, you know, all that just yeah. investing in kids. I had an opportunity to start a school from the ground up. I named it. I, I, I wrote the business plan. I recruited all the kids. Like it was, it was a charter school in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And so that was how I got known in the community. And so I became friends with the guy who was trying to start the local TEDx, you know, the okay. local TED uh, version there, uh, Joey and... Um, and so Joey and I became friends and he's like, Hey, we're looking for speakers. And I think you'd be awesome to share your story. Cause I had not, I had not shared my accident story. You know, mm -hmm. I'd shared my education story, but not my accident story. And so it was just a, um, it was a very providential in, in being able to share it. But uh, you know, what I learned through that whole process is like, we all have our impossible. We all have yes. the thing that, and I, I face that a lot as an, as an educator, I've got, I've got kids coming to me, you know, Kids that have high needs, low income, high needs kids, you know, that are told their whole life, you can't, mm -hmm. you know, you can't do this, like, just settle, 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 settle was the message they were getting at home. And at the Mentorship Academy, the school I was running, we were telling kids, like, we would start the first two weeks of school, we'd start at college, we would, we wouldn't even have them in our building, we would, we would put them on a college campus, and we would teach them there, because we wanted to show them a vision of, of a preferred future. Oh, and I, I love think, it we believe in you and we want to help you get here because there were all, all the kids we were teaching were first generation college bound. Mm -hmm. They didn't have anybody they even knew that even went to college. And so for me, that's, that's it for their, yeah. for them, their impossible was getting to college. For me, my impossible was walking and yeah. running. And then, I mean, starting the school and uh, through the, through that whole process, the Ted talk and, and the school, you know, I had an opportunity to write a book. Yes. So I, wrote a, I wrote a book on how we launched our school called Social Media for School Leaders. We use social media a lot. Mm -hmm. And in launching that book, I just fell in love with the process of I've got a message. How do I get it out? Yes. And, and the answer is marketing. You know, marketing is not a sleazy thing. Marketing is just figuring out a way to take our message mm -hmm. and get it in the hands of the right people. Exactly. So I, I realized that, you know, it's actually, they're not different worlds. It's, it's you can be an educator and a marketer you know, at the same time, like good marketing time. is really about educating people. Yeah. And so do you think that everybody has an online course in them? Because I know you're, you absolutely believe everybody has a message. Right. Do you also believe everybody has an online course? Oh, absolutely. I, I believe that, I believe that the, the internet is so big. And here's the thing, like we overestimate the competition, you know, oh, that's we, good. we think that everybody else is trying to do what we're doing. They're not, yeah. you know? I, I, I do coaching. And so my, one of my coaching students canceled a couple of days ago and she, her whole email said, because December, she said, I got to cancel our call because December, I'm just overwhelmed by December. And I remember looking at, I wrote her back a long email because I said, listen, you can't let December get you down. I was going to say, I already know Brian from having you coached me. I already yeah. know what you said her back. That's Come awesome. On. So that's the mentality. I mean, we're, we're recording this on a Friday. You know what most people are doing on a Friday? Not doing a podcast. Yeah. Okay. So Jen, you've got the hustle and you've, you've got the drive in you. And the thing is, most people don't have the drive. So yeah. I believe that if you continue to focus on, our, on your audience, I'd say start with your people. So you've yeah. got to start with who is, your, who is your person, how do you help them, and what do you, what do you teach them? We call it the, it's the amp and amplify. It's audience message and process. Audience so message and process. I'm writing yeah. this down. Okay. It's audience message and amplify. process. Okay. So your audience. So who is it you serve? Usually it's the per it's you three years ago. Mm -hmm. So so for you, Jen, you're helping creative entrepreneurs yeah. get clear in their message, figure out their products. You're you're helping them get clear. Well, guess what? Three, five years ago, you had to get clear. I did, yeah. Right? So you've yeah. gone through this process. And here's the thing: we're walking through our lives, we're learning these lessons, we're having these experiences, and so often we forget to turn around right behind us. There are people following in our footsteps. Yeah. And all we have to do is we can say, you know what? Instead of taking three years to learn what I took three years to learn, why don't I coach you? Can I help you skip yeah. a year of learning? Yeah. And that's what we sell. You know, our course is just helping them skip a year of learning for a very reasonable rate. It is. So, 
Have you learned anything in your life? Have you been able to overcome anything in your life? I think everybody who's trying to make a difference has overcome something. And that's the message that we have to share. I totally love that. You know, in my coaching group, I tell some of the women in there, it's almost like um, a, a Titus two yeah. type of thing where you've got That's people right. that have gone before you that you're yeah. grasping onto their hand, but you yeah. also have people coming behind you that need you to just stick out your hand and give them whatever it is that they're needing that you know. You have a responsibility, That's right. I think, to, um, to literally teach those coming behind you. And so I love that you're so committed to courses. Mm -hmm. So when most people are trying to come up with a course or launch a course or um, figure out what their course should be, ab be about, where yeah. do you find, Brian, that most people are getting stuck? Where are, like, Ooh, where yes. are they like, oh, I'm so, like, I don't know, is it the tech? Is right, it the, right. the price? Like, where's everybody getting stuck at? Yeah, you know, it's actually right, it's before that. Um, okay. You know, I, the analogy I use is the, is the newspaper at the end of the driveway. Mm. So here, every Thursday here, so yesterday, the Charlotte Observer drops off a newspaper at the end of my driveway. I haven't ordered this newspaper, but okay. that's their marketing strategy. They, they throw these newspapers throughout my community, throughout my neighborhood, and everybody has a newspaper at the end of the driveway, and I don't want it, okay? <laughs> right? I like Google, not right. the local newspaper, okay? Right. Do you want to, like, send them a little message or be like, dude, right. I, but I, don't wanna, I, I don't even, I don't want to waste my time unsubscribing. Like, it's just, I never opted in for it. I don't want yes. it. And so my, my weekly ritual now, Friday is our, our recycle day today, and so in the morning on Friday, when I walk out to the, to the driveway to put out the recycle bin, I pick up that newspaper and I put it in the recycle bin. That's my interaction with the Charlotte Observer. Okay. okay. That's what happens when we create a course in a vacuum. We create a course without any feedback Ooh. is we make something that nobody wants. We make Ooh, a newspaper. That's so good. Driveway, right. And so guess what? That this morning, that newspaper was wet and gross because it's been raining all night. It was like, I don't want this. <laughs> what we do with our courses or with our books. I see it with a lot of first time authors. They write the book they wanted to write and not yeah. the book the reader needed to read. Mm, that's, you know what, Brian, that's profound. We are, I am exactly in that spot right yep. now. Just had a conversation last yep. week with someone about my book that I wrote two years ago that we've never got to print. And it's because I wrote the book that I thought I should, yes. or I thought that people wanted. And I think we wrote the wrong book. Wrote the wrong book. I love it. I did the same thing. My social media for school leaders book, I would look back now and I'd say, you know what? School principals do not want to learn how to use social media. If, if, if I started, and here's, here's the advice, okay? If instead of writing a book, I would have said to Wiley, who wanted to publish a book, I would have said, great, I'll, I'll sign a deal with you. We, we can do the deal. But I need six months of testing. I need to validate, okay? okay. So what I'm going to do is instead of, uh, we're going we're gonna to put the manuscript deadline back six months, mm -hmm. okay? And I was a first-time author. Like, I, I didn't know that you could do things like that. But yeah, yeah. they want to have a book that sells, so they're willing to take right. the time. So what I would have said is, I need six extra months to validate. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start a coaching group of principals, of school principals. And what I would do is I'd post on my Facebook, okay? My personal Facebook, not even a page. Like a lot of you listening right now, you don't even have much of a social media following. That's fine. You have friends. You have people that are connected to you. They've been following your life. They've been yeah. seeing your progress. So here's what you do. You, it's a four-step process. Step number one, call this personal coaching. So you, uh, on your Facebook, you say, hey, I'm doing some paid coaching. If you're interested, send me a message. That's it, okay? That's it, okay. You don't even have to have price. You don't have to schedule. You don't have to have Zoom or anything like that, okay? Then what I do is I recommend you meet with them three times for $97, okay? okay. That's a great entry-level price point for most people, okay? 100 bucks for three sessions. For three not calls. one session. Okay. Because the first session, they're not even open with you. They're not even honest. They're just trying to see if I can trust you. Okay. It's usually the second and third session that they start actually sharing what they're struggling with. If you only do one coaching session, you won't get the real answers from them. And then you'll write something that, that still doesn't connect. So three sessions, $97. And, uh, and here's the thing. I, I had one of, my, one of my coaching students do this, right? So she posted on her Facebook, hey, I'm doing some personal coaching. If you're interested, three sessions, $97, send me a Facebook message. She has six people write her back and okay. say, yes, I want to hire you. Those six people that hired her, hired her for a completely different reason than she expected. Really? Okay? Yes. So she thought they were going to hire her because she's a writing coach and she helps authors. But uh, um, the people that actually hired her were to help their, um, their teenage daughters write their college admissions essays. 
Okay, how crazy is that? That's true. So she's a college professor. She, she is a, a writing coach. And yep. she thinks that she thought her message was to help basically moms figure out their memoir. Turns out moms don't want to pay to figure out their memoir, but they want to pay for their daughters to figure out how to apply for college and how to write a really good college admissions essay. That is so good. So if, if she would have created a course, it would have been called like the memoir project or something. Right. And she would have sold zero. It would have been a newspaper at the end of the driveway, creating a product that nobody yeah. wants. Instead, okay. she, she's now currently coaching. She's doing these sessions with these girls, right? With like mm-hmm. 17, 16, 17, 18 year old girls, helping them with their college admissions essay. And she, uh, we did a coaching call the other day. She's like, Brian, I had no idea I would love this as much as I do. Because what's obvious to you is magic yeah. to other people. I, okay, that is good. What's obvious to you, I'm writing this down, is, is magic, magic to, other, to people. other people. Okay. So they, they already know the magic, right? When people see Jen, they're like, how does she do it? How does she take this piece of furniture and make it awesome? How does she take this blank wall and make it look incredible? They already see your magic, but we can't read our own label. So I don't know what I'm good at. I just live my life and try to do the best I can. But other people go, Brian, I need your help. I need you to help me with this thing. And so the first step is offering personal coaching on our, on our Facebook. Okay. Because cool. people will hire us for what they see in us, not what we're selling. Right. So okay? you're supposed to give them what they want. What yes. is it? Sell them what they want and give them what they need. Give them what they need. <laughs> okay. So start with personal coaching. Then once you do that a couple of times, I'd say six times. Once, mm-hmm. you, once you do six, six three uh, session packages, six different people. Okay. First of all, there's some income there. So you're not waiting a year to make any income. You've got some income coming in. Right. Then you start doing group coaching. So now you have a focus. Maybe of those six people that hired you, four of them was for parenting tips and two of them was for decorating tips. Uh Now you have a choice. Do I want to do a decorating course or a parenting course? Okay. Yep. And then you open it up again. You say, hey, I'm doing a group coaching program. No courses yet, right? You're not doing any slides. You're not doing any video shooting, anything like that. You're just saying, listen, we're going to meet for six Mondays in a row, Monday nights at eight o'clock. The, we're going to meet. It's a group of only 10 people or mm-hmm. up to 10 people. It's $200. So now you double your price, $200. And I'm going to teach you how to get started in homeschooling. Okay. Or whatever it is. Yes. Okay. So it's a six week coaching program, how to get started in homeschooling. It's $197. I'm only taking 10 people. If you're interested, here's the application form or here's the checkout mm-hmm. form. If you want, I always love doing applications. Because then you get to know them a little bit more. Yeah. So now they go through your coaching program. And all you do on Monday nights at 8 o'clock over Zoom, right? We use this webinar platform called Zoom. Yep. You're answering their questions. You're sharing your knowledge. And you're recording each of these calls. So what you're doing is you're capturing the questions they're asking. You're teaching them. You're Mm -hmm. walking with them. And what you do is you're learning their pace. Because when we create a course on our own, we either go way too fast or way too slow. Oh, that's good. It's like drinking from a wire hydrant sometimes, I think. Yes. It's, it can be overwhelming or it's drip, 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 and it's not enough. And, and yeah. people refund because they're like, that wasn't meaty enough. I need to right. more depth. Gotcha. Okay, so you do that. That's the group coaching program. And once you've done that, now it's time to actually shoot your course. Okay, and this because is step now- four? This is, this is step three, actually. Okay? okay, got it, got it. So step, step, step one was personal coaching. Yep. Step two was doing the group coaching. Group coaching, coaching. uh-huh. Step three, I actually recommend, it's kind of an interim step, but I call it step three. It's the, uh, what you do is you have, what I like to do, um, what, when, I, when I launched mine, what I did is I would do the Q&A calls on a Thursday night, okay? So they get Q&A calls on a Thursday night, and then Friday I had the morning blocked off for me to film the videos for the following week. So instead of going into studio and shooting all the videos at the same time, yeah. I, would, I would slow down, okay? I did the Q&A calls on Thursday night. I'd hear all their questions. And a lot of them I'd say, you know what? We're going to cover that next week. I'd film the videos on Friday. Okay. We'd edit it over the weekend. And then Monday, we'd send out all the new videos for that week. So they'd watch the videos, and then they'd ask questions on Thursday night. So they'd watch the videos Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, ask questions on Thursday, film more videos on Friday and keep doing that. It's a cycle. So over six weeks and guess what? At the end of the six weeks, I had the six calls recorded, but I also had all these modules that I had built out. Right. So now I've got, we call that a a coaching program. That's an online coaching program. Mm -hmm. Once that was all done, now I have a self-study course. 
the self-study course are all those videos I recorded sure. week by yeah. week by week, right? And so that's the fourth step. The fourth step is a self-study version. And the nice thing about that is you can drop the price. So people that wanted to join you at the coaching level, uh, but you know, couldn't afford it or whatever, uh, now yeah. you can say, listen, I have two options now. I have the self-study course you can take right now, watch all the videos at your own pace whenever you want, or you can join my coaching program when I open it again. Okay, and I love that. That's how you develop your course. And the thing is, that's how you create Google instead of a newspaper. You know, mm -hmm. that's how you make Uber instead of a taxi service. That's how you create something people actually want because you're validating by them buying. You know, right. there's nothing more validating than somebody actually giving you a dollar to say, yes, I want that thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the ag exact opposite of that, that you, mm -hmm. I've heard you say before that there's nothing like failing to give you feedback. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's so good when you just don't look at the failure of maybe a course that didn't go quite like you wanted it or a launch right. quite like you wanted it. That right. is great feedback for us mm -hmm. business owners to get painful. Yeah. Great feedback. And so, um, yeah. so I know self-development is really big with you. I know you're an avid yeah. reader and right. you actually have a Facebook group for readers and writers called Hope Writers, which I'm a That's part right. of. And yes. they can look that up on Facebook. Am I right? Our yeah, listeners? Hope, HopeWriters.com. We only open it a couple times a year. I think it's open right now. Yeah. Uh, but you know, HopeWriters.com. It's, yeah, th here's the thing. We want to encourage people with our writing. We want to yeah. give them hope. But who is the encourager of the encouragers? Oh, that's so good. that's how we set up that site. That site yeah. is to help you walk through, you know, the strategy, the technology, right. but really just the encouragement of getting your message out. Love it. Okay. So, um, I know you read a ton of books and I've picked mm -hmm. up a couple of tips from you yeah. that yeah. I'd love it if we could share with my audience because they were gold when you gave them to me. So awesome. number one, you listen to books like fast on a fast forward. You I like do. literally, you listen to them on audible at like 1.25%. Don't you? Is that, is that how it I describe it? No, it depends on the narrator. Uh, yeah. The one I'm listening to right now, he's at, he's at two, two times speed because he's slow. That is <laughs> you say that. <laughs> I, I wish people could see your face because you're like, and he's slow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you're listening. So that's a tip for our audience. So you can listen to things on a fast forward. But isn't there yeah. also an app, Brian, that you use that just gives you like the meat and potatoes of a, of a book so you don't have to sit and listen to the whole thing? Or did I dream that up? Oh, no. There's actually a few services that I've seen pop up that are, that are awesome. You know, the one that I've used in the past uh, is called Get Abstract which is like basically, you know, an abstract, not a great title, but an abstract is basically taking the whole book and like parsing it down to about three pages of content. Yeah. Okay. So, but there are other ones that are doing that now. Uh, there's one that's an app. I can't remember the name right now, but you can look that up. Like book summary. If you Google yeah. book summary, yeah. you're going to find those. What, what I found is um, I actually have a, I have kind of a, a three-step process of how I process a book. The first thing is I'm very careful about what I actually, like what yeah. I invest yeah. in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, what I consume. And so I will, I will just, I have an ongoing uh, list in Evernote that I use. And if somebody I respect or look up to has recommended a book, I'll, I'll write it on my list, but I won't go buy it right away. I'll wait until I hear from a few other people mm -hmm. that that book's been foundational. For example, the most recent book I just bought is called The Coaching Habit. The reason I bought it is because my friend Chandler Bolt recommends it. My friend Pat Flynn recommends it. I trust both those guys. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, two guys I look up to and, and you know, are friends. And I'm like, I right. respect them. They recommend it. So it must be good. Then I buy the Audible version. Mm -hmm. and the nice thing about Audible is they have a refund policy. If you don't like the book, you refund it and you get your credit back. I didn't know that. Yeah. I've been on Audible for like a year or two. Oh, that's amazing. It. Okay. So they refund. So I, I mean, I basically have reused my Audible credits over and over. I look at it as a library, actually, not, yeah. a, not a shop. Yeah. Because if the narrator's not that great or, the, or, the, or whatever, the content's not great, I just refund. Like, they have a process uh -huh. to doing that. You have up to 365 days to refund. It's amazing. Okay. And their customer service is great. So they'll give you your credit back. Mm -hmm. So then what I did, because Chandler and Pat recommended it, is I bought it with an Audible credit, and I've started listening to it on Audible. Now, I do, I do it at a faster pace, but I'm yes. listening to it like in my life. I've got little kids, we're in yes. the car, and I've got one, I use the AirPods, you know, and I've got one AirPod in, and I'm they're, they're on my Christmas list, by the way, the AirPods. They're, they're, they're amazing, because I can get through a book like that, it's a six and a half hour book, I can get it through, get through it in about two days, okay. with, without any dedicated audiobook time, it's just in the car, doing a workout, you know, right. before, I, like, before I go to bed, I have it yeah. playing here, you know, and so I get through that book in about two days. If the book's really good, if I, want it, if I want to engage more deeply in that book content, then what I do is I get the physical copy of the book, okay? okay. And then, get, check this out, then I re-listen to it. 
I but I'll actually do it intentionally and I'll have the physical copy and I'll highlight, highlight, mm -hmm. you know, so I get to see it. Right. So that yeah. my reticular activating system, like my recognition of what's important is it's deep going deeper into what I, you know, who I'm becoming is part of this book, you know? Yeah. And then the really next level, if I love the book, if it's still engaging, then I'll even get the Kindle version of it. So that way I can take all those highlights and then what, what Kindle does is, it, it, I don't know if you know this, but in your Amazon account, there's a section called My Kindle Highlights. Okay. And it saves everything you've highlighted from, from the Kindle version of the book. So it's on a one page. I have all the quotes from that book that impacted me. And then I'll print that out. Yeah. And that's something I can look at. I'll use it for my Twitter. You know, I'll use it for my Instagram. But it's basically, it's a filtering process. How do I take the six and a half hour book and, and parse it down to like the 10 really foundational concepts right. that impact? Yeah. I, and I, I know that you love um, quotes and sayings. I actually yeah, wrote down yeah. one that I recently just heard from you and it was not your quote, but one that you use that you read in a yeah, book that right. nothing has a stronger influence psychologically on our children than the unlived life of their parent. Oh, that's and nice. I was like, whoa. Yeah. So I actually, when I see a lot of your quotes and stuff on social media, I'll, I'll like, you know, screenshot that. And yeah. I'm like, cause that was deep. And I don't know, do you remember what book that was out of? I think it was Carl Jung. You said, who said it? Yeah, yeah. He's a famous psychologist from, I think, from like the 30s or 40s. I, you know, whenever I do quotes, it's sometimes you hear them like just in the air, you know, you yeah. hear them on a podcast and you never get it. So I try to give credit when I can, yeah. you know, as much as possible. Um, but I think that's it. It's like, here's the thing, you know, success leaves clues. Yeah. Nothing new under the sun. So you're trying to get your message out. You're trying yeah. to build a course, build an online platform. There are people that you can follow that have already done those things. Mm -hmm. The, th the key is not trying to create it completely on your own, but standing on the shoulders of others, those that have come before us. And so, you know, a lot of people I know don't read biographies. I've started getting yeah. into biographies because you can take a lifetime of learning and parse it down to about a three or four hour audiobook. you know? Yeah. And so don't waste your life. You know, don't take your whole life learning these things. Trying the to reinvent way. the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. When you can apply what other people have, other people have gone before. So there's two lessons in that. Number one is learn the lessons from the people that have gone before. But also lesson two, you've gone before for people behind you. Yes. So turn around and share what you're learning. So learn from other people. This is the, that Timothy or that Titus concept. Yeah. Learn from other people, but then share it to the next generation. And Timothy even says, and the next generation beyond that. Yeah. And that gener and and some of those people that are learning from you live right there in your home. I love it. So oh, do you yeah. have two seconds for a quick lightning round? I love lightning Let's rounds. Let's do it. Let's okay, do it. awesome. So your favorite book that you've read recently. Mm. Oh, that's such a good one. I'm gonna throw out an old one. Because, okay. Because this is a this is a foundational one. This is well, oh, there's so many I could share. Um <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would be really hard for you to answer this question because you've been reading at my stack over there. You know, actually, I, I'm going to go this. I'll do, I'll do a newer one that's really impacted me. It's Ryan Holiday, and he wrote a book called The Perennial Seller. And the idea with The Perennial Seller is creating something that lasts 10 years or more. So if you write a book, you don't want that book just to sell a bunch in the launch week and then go away. You want to you write a book that 10 years from now, you're like, oh, man, I'm still proud of that book. That book is still making an impact. So the courses that we publish at Amplify Publishers, we want a four-year shelf life. Okay. Four years on the internet is an eternity. It's a long time, yeah. So we want to think, like, we don't want to use, like, examples from today. Like, I won't mention, you know, the president or something that's happening in technology because four years from now, that won't be relevant. Right. So how do you think about what you're doing as having more staying power? So perennial sellers are really good one for that. Ryan uses a lot of great examples about work that really lasts. Awesome. Where's your favorite place to vacation? Oh, I love, it's probably Charleston, South Carolina. Love, love going down to the beach. Beautiful. Your favorite yeah. Netflix series or TV show? Mm. Oh, so good. I'd, I'd say The Prophet. The Prophet. Okay. You're going to love it. Marcus Lemonis. Ma Marcus Lemonis. Okay. Yeah. He followed me on Twitter once and I about fell out. I don't know if he's still following me on Twitter. It was a couple of years yeah. ago, but I literally screenshotted that. Good. I love that show. All right. Yeah. And the last one, because I'm all about houses and decorating, the favorite room in your house. Oh, a favorite room in my house. You know, I love my office. Yeah. I do. I do. It's my, it's, my, it's a place of solace. It's a place for me to come up with my creative work. It's a place for me to connect with people like yeah. you. You know, I can awesome. close the door. 
it's it's yeah it's my place i love it thank you so much brian thank you just for being here and would you mind just telling people where can they find you online i i believe you've got a free resource if they're interested I do. yeah will you yeah. tell them where they can take advantage of that at yeah you know i found there's two kinds of people so listening right now i want you to think about which one are you oh. there's people that have made a dollar or more online mm -hmm. and there's people that have never made a dollar online oh that's good i want to help you go from zero to one because the gap between zero and one is bigger than the gap between a dollar and a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. You've got to make your first dollar. There's nothing like proving it to yourself, seeing that dollar yeah. deposit in your PayPal account That's and going, awesome. wow, I can do this. So I've, I've, I have a PDF. Yep. It's called three figures in three hours. I show you step-by-step step how to make a hundred dollars tonight. Okay. Tonight. Awesome. Okay? And so download it. It's at amplifymethod.com because it's the method to help you amplify, right? Amplify what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Take your message to a bigger level. Amplifymethod.com. You download the PDF. It's going to show you how to, how to generate $100 online tonight. And I believe, and that's not going to be your big course, right? It's really right. simple to get started. But once you get started, you can reinvest that money into finally upgrading your ConvertKit account or mm -hmm. finally investing in entrepreneur, or finally paying somebody to fix your website. But that money will generate some momentum for you. That's so, so good. Such valuable information. Momentum is key. Just getting that first little bit of confidence. It's yep. amazing how that can just spark a flame. So, yep. Brian, thank you so much. And thank Thanks you to all of the listeners who are here today. We just appreciate you so much. And if you get a chance, if you could slip on over to iTunes and subscribe and leave Brian and I a really kind review, that would be much appreciated. And as always, you can send us a note to podcast at themagicbrushinc.com. And we're glad you were here. Thanks for joining us. Until next week. Stay creative. Again, I want to thank Antique Farmhouse, our podcast sponsor for today. This is where you can go to get all of your farmhouse decor online. Visit antiquefarmhouse.com. Sign up for their emails. You'll get those delivered directly to your inbox every day. Incredible industrial decor, farmhouse decor, shabby chic, and vintage reproductions. Antiquefarmhouse.com. Mm -hmm.